With us today, we have Grammy-nominated super producer Malcolm Olagundoye, a.k.a. Chopsticks. And we will be chopping it up about all things civic participation and social impact. What's good, Chopper? I'm good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it's your guys that call you Chopper. I said, let me just farm. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. What's going on? Yeah, the original name is actually Chop Chopper. Chop Chopper? Chopper. Oh, Chopper, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's life? Yeah, life is beautiful, man. I've been good. Okay. So far, at least. Now, I know you, I think, I feel like you recently, you, you spoke about this on your Instagram or something, but yeah. Chopsticks, yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting name. Where did it come from? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I've probably gotten asked this question like 10 billion times. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So, the original name was Chopper. I mean, close friends that know me from way back, from like 09, 06, still call me Chopper. Yeah. Um, yeah because I used to chop up like samples. I used to like find old records and chop it up and make new records. Okay. So I've been sampling from like way back. Mm. But the, how the name Chop 6 even came about is really funny. Someone gave me that name in my class. <laughs> secondary school? Yeah, secondary school. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, most, most times when you have a nickname from secondary school, it stays with you for the rest of your life. You exactly. Know? Exactly. I tried to get rid of the name, but I mean, I couldn't, so I decided to just go with it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Now, speaking of sampling. Okay. Yeah. How does it feel? I just want to know. Just speak to me. Yeah. Man to man. <laughs> how does it feel to be partly responsible yeah. for what I think will become the song of the summer? Okay. Which is Last Last oh, yeah. by Burner Boy. Yeah. Yeah. How does it feel? Um, Globally. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. put, yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, I have, I've always wanted to have, if I was going to have a, I was always wanted to have a record. It was going to be a big record. I wanted to be a record that actually represents me sonically. Like, I don't, I didn't want to have, I didn't want to make music because I just wanted to make something that was popping or so, or go with the popular sound. Yeah. yeah. Even if I had a hit record that is with the popular sound, I might not really, really feel fulfilled. You know, that's the reason why my sound is always different because I always just want to push what my sound is. So when you think of chopsticks, is a certain sound you have in your head that you want to, you know, you want to um, create. So I, I actually felt like it's finally happening mm. you know, with Last Last because Last Last is a sample. It's not your everyday typical record. Like, I mean, I my mean, piano is what everybody's you know, tending to gravitate towards right now, but I'm just happy we're able to go against yeah. uh, the trend yeah. and still come out tops. So when yeah. you created the beat, yeah. right? And when the song came out, yeah. did you think it would do as well as it is doing now? Um, to be honest, as soon as we were done with the production and I exported the song, we had a moment in the studio where me and Bonna just looked at ourselves like, Bruh. We've done something. <laughs> We've done something here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we knew it was going to be a big record, but I didn't know it was going to be this big. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But I knew it was going to be like big globally, but not, you know, a billboard type big boy. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really dope record. So and it's beautiful because I'm looking at on the, on the, yeah. Americans, Australians, a lot of people singing along to the lyrics. They don't yeah. particularly know, know what, what they're they, saying, yeah. you know, but it's crazy. It's almost like a spiritual something. Like, <laughs> and even us that know, you yeah. know, what it means, yeah. there's a way you sing it that is it's almost like you've been through Do what yeah. he has been through. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. Singing from the heart. Yeah. So, I mean, it must, it must be really nice. Yeah. So, before that even record even came about, he wanted, he wanted a record that could allow him to speak about, because a lot had happened, mm. you know, within the period of when he, you know, um, got his Grammy to the point where he released um, Last Last. Yeah. A lot has happened, you know, in his life, musically, his relationship, in his career, everything. Yeah. You know, so he wanted a record that could allow him to express that. And I love artists who want to express themselves. Because, to be honest, when I'm making a beat, when I'm in the studio making a beat, I'm, it, for me, it's, it's, it's expression. I'm yeah. trying to express myself. So if I link up with an artist who just wants to just freestyle on a beat and just make something, I wouldn't really feel fulfilled. That's that the reason why I pick who I work with. Mm. You know, I like people who put their heart into their art. Yeah. You know, and that was, that's why the record is what it is today. And I imagine for even for him, like the a lot of people have their opinion yeah. of what the song is about. I yeah. can imagine it's about a bunch of things. Yeah, so or people think it's about one thing. Yeah, people gravitate towards, oh, it's a heartbreak song yeah. because of what he said in the song. But yeah. Literally, if you listen to the lyrics, 
he's really just talking about everything that's happened in his life, mm. you know, within that period of time and remembering other things that basically mess with his emotions or yeah. So it's not necessarily a relationship song. It's just a it's just an expressive song to just tell people how, you know, vulnerable he was at certain times in his life. Yeah. You know, and everything that's ha- that happened, you know, within that period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for like you personally now, your discover your discography is thick. <laughs> <laughs> it's robust. You get weight. Yeah. Um and you've been doing this for years. Yeah. Right. So how has that journey been for you? And I'm asking this also on the backdrop of the Afrobeats um, documentary that just dropped on Netflix yeah. and just seeing kind of like the beginning of Afrobeats and where it is today. It is so even like you, you must have gone through several stages where you're experimenting with sound. And so how has that been for you? Um, it, it actually, I won't lie, it's been, an, it's been a very interesting journey. Even if it has, it's, it's had its up and downs. Yeah. It's been a very, very, I've, I've tried, what I've learned to start doing now is just to enjoy every bit of the journey, mm. the bads and the goods. So basically, my, my music career started in Jaws. Jaws, that's like the northern part of Nigeria. That's where, that's where I grew up. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Please remember where you are now. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about yeah. Jaws? Why is it that? I tweeted this um, thing recently. Yeah. I don't know what it is about Jaws. Jaws just seems to churn out exceptional people yeah. and then particularly in the creative space what is it so i'm um, me I'm, I'm a yoruba boy yeah but I, I grew up in the north yeah i grew up in jaws jaws is home to me basically that's where i've known all my life yeah just really beautiful i can talk about jaws the whole of today is a beautiful i need people to actually go there for themselves and see for themselves so i don't see myself i'm hyping yeah it's really beautiful the landscape is beautiful the greenery the hills the mountains you know it's just a lovely place that when you are around that type of environment, it just, it lets you, because, I mean, Lagos is here. Everybody's hustling. Everybody's moving there. Yeah. So, the stress here wouldn't let you really, really think creatively. And I hear there's a sense of yeah. community as well yes. in just Yeah, in just you can have a flat tire and someone who doesn't know you from anywhere can pull over and help you fix it. Yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how, that's where I grew up to know. You know, it was not until I came here that I thought, okay, you know, you can't really, really be moving. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pattern yourself. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just is. I feel like it's the it's the it's the environment, and then the weather is really cool, mm. really nice. It doesn't get too hot, you know. It's really good on the skin, and it lets you just unwind and just be in your creative space. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so um, and I was opportune to to work with a lot of people who were musically inclined at this, at the time when I was growing up in Jaws, from producers to um to sound engineers to instrumentalists, and then also I joined um the band, the church band which I later got kicked out of. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> and then luckily for me, my principal in school then, um, who is a music lover, so he built us, he built us a studio. In okay. So I was able to join the music um, uh, club in school. And then uh, at the time, I think that was when Peace Square was um, graduating at the time because we were like, we were like three years senior. Oh, same school? Yeah. Okay. So I was, I was opportune to have that, you know, um, opportunity to actually be in a music and drama club and then learn how to play instruments. That's where I now started learning how to make music on the computer, like digitally. And that, that was where my production, you know, my, my, my music journey started. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So now more um, towards, I guess, what the topic of the day is. Yeah. Um, how did you or did you get involved in social activism? Do you have any projects you're working on at the moment? Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I'm of the opinion that Nigeria can easily be Easily be the best country in the world. Easily. Because we always say this, that we have everything it takes. We have the people, we have the resources, we have the land, we have the space, we have everything it takes to be the best country in the world, literally. Yeah. But it's just the people we send to represent us that, you know, mess up everything. If you put the right people in front of us, you know, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be okay. So, I, I, and I feel like because of how the country is set up, everybody's trying to look for their daily bread, you know. So nobody's really, really, really thinking about, oh, you know, I think I should just do this for the for the for the long run, for yeah. the, for, the, for you know for the future. Let me just do this now, and it, it might not really really benefit you now, but it benefits you later in the future. But people are not really thinking that everybody's in survival mode. And one of the best ways to fix the problem is because if you have a headache now, you can take Panadol, the headache will go. But if you don't 
figure out the reason why you have that headache. You will have that headache again. Mm. It might be from stress. So you need to figure out what, where the problem is from. You know, and I, I feel like it starts from how we were brought up from our homes, from our schools. You know, the orientation you have as a kid that is going to stay with you till you grow up and that's what you're going to use and apply to life yeah. you know, for the rest of your life. So I start, I, and I, so I, I have a um, CSR project that's called Sound Education that I was doing for, I had to put it on pause now because I was obviously funding it from my pocket. So, yeah. And it's not easy. So, I mean, funding is a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, basically, I used to get like a lot of emails and text messages from kids in school. I don't even know where they get my contacts from, but till today, I still get those emails at least. Te- now, it's about, it's more now, like maybe 30 emails a day, a day. Oh, wow. Yeah, from these kids. And most of the email, content of the email is the same thing. They say, oh, boss, I want blue. Boss, I, I'm, I need to uh, blah, blah, blah. I want to become star. I want to become the next whiskey. I want to become the next David Doe, next Benno, whatever. But they just want to do something, you know, with their life. Yeah. And at that time, if I tell them, and they always say they want to drop out of school to do these things. And if I tell them, if me at Chop Chop Six said, yeah, drop out, do it. They'll listen to me. They would rather drop out of school and go do music because, I mean, they're looking at someone who they feel like is doing this thing, is successful in this thing. So they'd rather follow this person yeah. and listen to their parents. So I started this, um, uh, uh, CSR project that lets them stay in school and still be able to do music. Mm. Yeah. So the initial plan was to go to, to, to these schools and set up studios for them and actually leave the studios there. But you can only use those studios based on merit, based on how well you, you're performing on your, on your grades. And also, apart from just setting up studios for them, we're trying to also reorientate them and let them know what the business part of you know, music is. Correct. Not just what they see on TV because what you see on TV is not really real. There's it's a lot just, of behind the scenes yeah, stuff. Exactly. You, you see a, a <clears> successful <throat> artist today, you don't know what they had to go through, the, what, all the ups and downs that they had to go through. We let them know what it is, you know, to, you know, to also shape their, their thinking so they can understand that you can actually make a living from this the right way. Yeah. Yeah, but after well, I had to put it on pause. I'm, I'm actually going to resume again um, early next year because I'm trying to do it properly this time. And do it yeah. yeah. So why this right particular process. initiative as opposed to anything else? So basically, I figured if I could go to these schools and tap into these kids at the very young age, yeah. I might be able to shape what the next generation is going to be. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be through, because I'm a producer, I can make music. You know, but if I'm there with these kids in those schools and I'm speaking to them face-to-face, one-on-one, they know what I've done. They know my achievements. I'm yeah. letting them know this is how to get there. They will listen to me. You know, and I feel like whatever the case is, you can, you, you'll be able to at least affect some kids. Yeah. You know, it might not be all of them, but at least you'll be able to make an impact, you know, from there. And they can grow up and live with that and become, you know, very meaningful people in the society. Yeah. And, and I that's guess how you can actually use that to shape society in the long run. Yeah. And I guess even though it's something that you probably navigated and figured out on your own, yeah. you can see how if you had somebody doing what you are trying to do for Honestly, them, yes. it would have... Yeah. And the reason why I was even able to, you know, get to where I am today is because I had the opportunity to even have a studio to work out in, to work mm. out in my school at the time. Imagine I have a studio. i will be hopping from place to place. I'll leave school basically yeah. to go somewhere else where I'm looking for studios where to work. You know, but I was just opportunity to have a principal who obviously was a music lover and was able to build a studio in school. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, as a music person, um, Music generally across the world really yeah. has been used to influence social change, has been used to speak about social issues and whatnot. Um, do you think new artists are doing it as much as they could be? Do you think there's an obligation on artists to use music to speak about social issues? Or do you think if it's something you can do, do it? If not, you know, do what you got to do. Yeah, so um, I would say using music to make an impact, a positive impact in the society. Yeah, not a lot of not a, not, not a lot of people will actually get it or understand the power they will when they are music. Like as an artist, you literally can speak to the you can speak to the world yeah. through your music, and people people can understand what you're saying or. Oh, yeah, understand what you're saying faster if it's through music. Well, that's why they're teaching us rhymes because it helps learning. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is the artists themselves. The people are different. You might be an artist. You may know how to make music and just make people happy, but you might not have the understanding or the orientation to know that this is power. I can actually use this 
to pass a message or to do this or to do that or to make a certain positive change. Yeah. You know, but a lot of people just feel like, oh, let me, I just want to blow. I just want to blow. That's what most people are thinking. And I don't blame them because I mean, the country is tough. It's, he, it's he difficult. Had. Yeah. If you can eat three times a day, you're a billionaire. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> you're a rich person. You know, so for the few that are actually doing it, which are maybe like older guys, I'm not, big, big, big respect to them. But for, for the younger guys, they just, I'm not sure they're really, really, you know, doing, doing that. Yeah. Um, everybody's just focused on trying to make people dance, sing about girls, sing about, I don't know, but, and that's the reason why I still work with, not to place anybody over anybody. Yeah, that's yeah. the reason why I still work with Burner Boy because if he has an album of 10 songs, for example, if nine songs is talking about women, partying, whatever, there will be one song that's going to pass a message through. Yeah. Yeah. He will, even if the song is still talking about partying in the club, he, there will still be a message in the song because you are talking, I mean, you're talking to millions of people. You might as well just tell them something important. Yeah. You know? Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, in general, in Nigeria, what are your thoughts on like social advocacy and influencer advocacy and that sort of thing? Um, this, I will also, you know, pick some points from my last points. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of influencers now who, we have a lot of people who claim to be, you know, influencers on Instagram or on social media or whatever social media platform that they use. Yeah. Obviously, um, I feel like they might not really, really understand what it means to influence, you know, because if you, you can, you can influence positively and you can influence negatively and you can just influence and not make any impact. Yeah. You just, because if, if you have, I feel like if you have up to 50,000 followers on any social media platform, that's a lot of people to speak to. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 um, that's enough audience. Because if you speak to 50,000 people, at least minimum, at least 200 people will, will take your word you know, and spread it to, those are 200 people speaking to another group of people. To so their own network. So to keep expanding. So you might not necessarily get across to 50,000 people completely, yeah. but whatever the little number is, you need to understand the power that you hold. You know, it's not just by posting fine pictures and saying, oh, I, I'm marketing this brand. I'm trying to make, because that's what everybody's trying to do. not just trying to make money. Yeah. I'm not trying to knock anybody's hustle, but... There has to be a way to, to balance. Yes. Making money and also influencing the right way. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Um, do you think that the, let's call it the noise yeah. we are making online and the involvement in civic participation online, do you think it is translating? Do you think it is going to translate into actual votes come 2023? Like, what are your feelings about Okay. How we're moving towards yeah. 2023. I actually like this question. <laughs> I had this discussion just yesterday. I was, I was arguing with somebody. I was trying to explain to him the reason why this is actually important yeah. for the information to actually go around. Yeah. So let's say, for example, take away social media now. And same scenario, election is coming up. People are trying to get people to be um, aware of whatever candidate they're putting out there. Obviously, they're going to go through um, NTA or whatever TV station channel that is out there that has number and the coverage. Yeah. The reason why social media is very important is because at least now you know, you know, at least now you are aware who to vote for. A lot of times when people go there to vote, they vote blindly. They just, or whoever they tell them, most people don't even know why they're voting. Yeah. A lot of people don't even understand how voting works. Some are just told, go and vote broom. Yeah, exactly. Or umbrella. Yeah, exactly. Because you need to understand the country we're in and also the, the population of the people who are educated and the people who are really not educated. Yeah. Who we're just going by, oh, word of mouth. Oh, when I read it, I'll just press this one. I'll just press this one. You get. But if you have a situation where you can actually get this message across to a large number of people through social media, I mean, that's a, that's a plus. So it's important to actually translate into, because the reason why INEC is recording the highest um, intake of um of people registering for, for PVCs. Yeah. It's, it's because of social media. Because people are preaching, you know, PVCs. Get your PVCs. That's the, reason, that's the only reason why. If it was done through TV stations, nobody really watches TV anymore these days. Let's mm. be honest. You know, it will still be the regular people who already, older people who already don't have PVCs that be watching those news. The people that you're trying to get across to are the younger people who are from like 18 upwards. Yeah. Who are always on their phone. The, their phone is basically the, the, their go-to device for getting information on any platform. Any it's platform. always their phone. They won't go on TV to go say, oh, let me watch the news today and see what it's saying. Yeah. Or let me read the newspaper and see what it's saying. 
is digital information. That's where they get it from. And that's the reason why it's important for that message to actually go across to as many people as possible through social media, to whatever social media platform. Yeah. So it will definitely translate Fair to enough. actual votes. Yeah. Do you think that we're now at a point where voter apathy will not be as much as it has been in the recent past? Like, I feel like a lot of people, especially since NSARS, have now woken up and are now trying to be part of the yeah. process. Yeah. So do you think we are now at a time where you know what? Come 2023, we might actually see record numbers in terms of turnout. Yeah. 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 To be honest, yeah, I really, I really, I feel strongly that this next election will determine what this country's fate will be moving mm. forward. Because to be honest, people are really tired. I myself, I'm tired. Like every, people, everybody's tired, old, young, whatever. They're actually, they're tired of the regular, everyday pattern. Oh, do this, do this campaign this way. They are tired of the services. They are tired of gov- the type of repeated governance. And it's just, it's just rinse, wash, repeat. It's the same thing every time. And it's about to happen again. So everybody's, everybody's aware now. And just seeing it play out and be like, like okay, we are doing this. Okay, but even if, it, how, how crazy it is now is, even if someone from, from, from nowhere just comes and form one political party now yeah. that nobody ever heard of, but it's actually tr- ready to do the right thing, you know. I mean, you'll be ready to try something new because whatever the you know, options are in front of you, you already know what they're about to offer. So you rather say, okay, you know, let me just try this thing, thing, this new thing and see how it is. Because if I go with this one, I already know what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like people are just tired of the regular same old, same old. They just want something new and something different and they want a better life for themselves. You know? Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I think I'll ask you one more question. Okay. <laughs> so one word in a positive light okay. to describe Nigeria, Nigerians. <laughs> I would say formidable. Okay. Because I actually like that word. Yeah. So yeah. I was thinking, ah, this is going to say resilient. Yeah. But I like formidable. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because every, every time I travel out of Nigeria, every Nigerian I've come across, every single Nigerian I've come across is just out there trying to make a living. Yeah. Like, you won't, you won't see a Nigerian outside of Nigeria just sitting in the corner begging on the street. I've never seen a Nigerian begging on the street outside of Nigeria. Once they leave this country, they're going out there to get it and bring it back. Mm. Maybe to their family members or to their whatever, or whoever. Because you know how it is. If you're able to leave, you probably just, you are maybe the breadwinner and you go out there and hustle and make a better life for yourself and then bring it back to your, to your family. But every Nigerian that I know is hardworking. Yeah. That issue of Nigerians being lazy, I've never heard of it. You can't even be lazy in Nigeria. It's impossible. <laughs> you would die. <laughs> you would just die off. So every Nigerian that I know is a hard worker. Every young Nigerian that I know, at least the ones that are within my circle that I, I'm, I'm aware of, are all hardworking people. Fair enough. And um, yeah, I think that's the word we will leave this session with, formidable. Yep. And I think generally, just kind of like how his career has gone and what he does. And in terms of the long-term hope and prayer for this country, just keep chopping it up. Yes, sir. Adjust, move, adjust. Even in terms of leaders, we'll find a way to, it's a jigsaw puzzle as far as I'm concerned. And we'll, Complete the puzzle soonest. Yep. Thank you, Chopper. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. You've been an awesome guest. Thanks. Until next time.